is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. Two weeks ago, NC State and North Carolina played a thriller in Chapel Hill. Johnson guarded by May, steps back, shoots a straight on three, bullseye! State has won it here in Carolina. Today, round two, can the Wolfpack sweep the season series, or will the Heels get their revenge? We find out next on the ACC Network. Three weeks to go in the regular season of the ACC. Houses divided, friendships are crossed. The 234th meeting all time between the Tar Heels and the Wolfpack in PNC Arena. And of course, when you talk about State Carolina, you get a couple of bigs. Luke May, second in the league in double doubles. And the sophomore from Istanbul, Turkey, Omir Yurt Seven, who is on a tear as of late. Here's the way the standings shape up. Carolina, after the win over Duke on Thursday night at 75, NC State lost in Blacksburg on Wednesday night. With Mike Jaminski, West Durham, we welcome you courtside here at PNC Arena. G-Man, all on the table now in this second match of the year. Well, I think the question is for Carolina, can they come back less than 48 hours after a Duke game and uh, play their other big rival? And for North Carolina State and Kevin Keats, if he can sweep North Carolina and beat Duke, he will have announced his presence with authority in the triangle. Yes, he will. Let's get to our innovative play. It's brought to you by Progressive Insurance, your first-round draft pick for car insurance, Mike. Well, the three-point shot was such a huge part of their win uh, in Chapel Hill. And here you'll see a little pick-the-picker action, the back screen. Get the drive to the basket and then just to roll behind for the wide open three for Braxton Beverly, a really well conceived play. And then you'll see this next action where you get a drive into the lane, draws four defenders into the paint, but it's really the extra pass that gets Al Freeman the open look at the basket. He was seven of seven from downtown. Freeman was one of the big stars in the 95-91 overtime win in Chapel Hill two weeks ago. Round two, NC State Carolina is next. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By Gatorade, win from within. By your Carolina Ford dealers. And by Bojangles, it's bow time. Well, gee, man, here we go. State Carolina round two. You're at seven in May to get us going with Les Jones, James Breeding, Keith Kimball on the whistle, and the Tar Heels control the tank. Kenny Williams. And it rattled out for your seven. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what I said. You know, the Duke North Carolina game uh, for both teams really, it takes it out of you physically, it takes it out of you emotionally. I think the start will be key. Williams said they didn't do very much yesterday at all. Just an hour on the court and some uh, some meeting time. Here at seven, left it short. And Joel Berry, who's had 20 or more in three of the last five for the Tar Heels. Cameron Johnson a three. And here is Markel Johnson for the pack. Yeah, the primary three-point shooters for North Carolina didn't make a three in this uh, in the loss of Chapel Hill, 0 of 9. Freeman lost it on the drive, got it back off the deflection. Tried to dump it inside, and then Pinson and Williams collided, and the lead pass knocked away Beverly. A little chaotic at both ends. Yeah, I think the, uh, again, the, the 2 o'clock start may have something to do with it as well, although North Carolina State, the extra, the extra day. Al is on May. It'll be his first, and here's a quick check of today's food line starting lineups. No surprises for either school, Mike. No, and, uh, you know, Pinson had the uh, monster game in Chapel Hill, and uh, yeah, for, with Freeman... It's kind of an either-or thing with him, Wes. He, you know, he, he had the he had the monster game in uh, in Chapel seven of seven from three, but he can just as easily not make a three in a game. You see the home numbers for Omir Yurt seven, who had 20 points and five rebounds in Blacksburg on Wednesday night, and he's staked the pack to an early two nothing lead. Over some uh, just some 
false pressure to try to take some time, time off the clock. Air ball by Johnson. Here's the pack with Markel Johnson. Torin Dorn. And Markel Johnson has just been outstanding for NC State over the past four games. Double figure assists. Really working well with Beverly. Cameron Johnson inside and the foul on Braxton Beverly. So Cameron Johnson, the grad transfer from Pittsburgh, gets the Tar Heels on the board. Yeah, they got the switch down low, and that's just a, a, a mismatch right there. But nothing Beverly could do, but if you're going to take a foul, make sure it's not a three-point play. It's uh, maybe a, a better offensive play for uh, Johnson to get into the rhythm rather than that first long three. Four straight double-figure games for Cam Johnson. Tar Heels go in front of point. In traffic, you're at seven a catch. Yeah, they're trying to give him some early touches, Wes. Put some pressure on Luke May to defend down low. Omir is the second-best field goal shooter in the ACC. Luke May on the board off the baseline. Uh, he's just been consistent all year long. Double doubles. Um, you know, that shot your seven is going to have no chance to get a hand on. Beverly from the deep corner. Well, things really, can, you know, turned around when uh, Markel Johnson came back and uh, Kevin Keats decided to play with the two of them together. They really feel comfortable. Stayed in front, too, after Beverly's rain-making three. Barry missed the layup. May follows it. You know, we, we thought we'd see that. You saw the Virginia yeah. Tech game that uh, Carolina would attack the rim, which Virginia Tech did very well off the dribble. Dustin Robinson was phenomenal on Wednesday night at the Castle for the Hokies. A good week to be named Robinson in the ACC. Pinson went for the dunk. You're at seven. Hit off the back iron out of play. It'll go to the pack. Well, you've got to like the aggression on both ends, and Pinson going for the dunk and normally getting a foul right there, but uh, your seven just really bothered the play more than anything, and I think that Pinson was anticipating the contact. Pinson missed a chance on Bagley the other night in Chapel Hill late. Got one to finish the ball game. And misfired there on Omir, your seven. Into the corner for Markel Johnson. Here's Yurt seven at 15 feet. Cameron Johnson, the rebound for the Tar Heels. A look ahead, nice catch by May and a foul on Yurt seven. First on Omir, number two on the pack. And that will bring Abdul Malik Abu. That's a, a preventative move by Kevin Keats to keep your seven from getting his second foul and a great run out by Luke May and a great look ahead by Barry. Stop throw in for the Tar Heels and it's Benson. Back for Barry's three. Deflected Markel Johnson and out of bounds. It'll stay with Carolina. We saw last Saturday night against Pittsburgh that action got Barry and Williams some three-point looks, Mike. Yep, yep. No, it was, uh, you know, the, the screen roll, but uh, Markel Johnson with those long arms. Don't normally see a guard block a jump shot, but uh, terrific timing on the play. Here's May. Pinson against Beverly. Cameron Johnson had it deflected, but right to Kenny Williams. And the long rebound, Joel Berry. And the follow. And there were nothing but Tar Heels around the offensive glass that time. Well, it was a different set in the second half Thursday night against Duke, Mike. 16 to 2 run to come out of the half to take control of the game. But also, they ended up plus six rebounds. Yeah, and five, you know, five guys willing to go on the offensive glass. Dorn gathers on the drive. And three seconds to call from the veteran referee, Les Jones. Third turnover on the Wolfpack. Underway in Raleigh. Carolina by two. Love being a part of the Duke, uh, Duke Carolina 
um, rivalry, but um, NC State, I just don't consider that as being a rivalry. We just don't like them, but um, it's not a rivalry like Duke and North Carolina. Well, needless to say, Joel Berry's comments from earlier in the week prior to Duke Carolina made a lot of headlines in Raleigh with the Wolfpack faithful. Mike, we hear a lot about Duke and Carolina, but if you've got any track record or any history in the ACC, you know all too well about NC State and Carolina. Uh, it, it's just as intense and just as heated. And, uh, and, you know, while Duke and Carolina is on a national level, in the state of North Carolina, this is as big as it gets as well. Well, and I might add, too, that uh, not to say that one generation understands it more than the others, but folks like you and me got a little traction on yep. us. We know about State Carolina in that light. Yep. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, it really hit home to me when I first started broadcasting and doing this game and seeing the intensity of the, the fan base. Sterling Manley, the follow of the miss. And the foul will be on Torin Dorn. And that'll give us a chance to visit with Mike on his Carolina Ford keys to the game today. Well, West North for North Carolina, uh, points off turnovers were a big issue and big reason why they lost that game. They only had 14 turnovers, but 22 points for the pack. And for Wolfpack, the backcourt play of Beverly and Markel Johnson is going to be huge in this game. At both ends of the floor, both Mike? Ends, yeah. And, uh, we talked about, you know, one, you know, can they... Can they manufacture 15 made threes again this game? And also, can they keep North Carolina's guards on the perimeter and out of the lane? 7-0 run for Carolina to build this five-point advantage here. The first five minutes of play in Raleigh. Abu travel. Shuffled right. the pivot foot right in front of umpire Keith Kimball. And a great matchup man-to-man. -man. Cameron Johnson and uh, on uh, Al Freeman. And he is just locked in on him. Freeman has had no room to breathe in this game. Freeman did tons of damage in Chapel Hill. 29 points, 8 of 11 from the floor. Hit all seven of his threes. Barry, the running one-hander. See, so even, you know, your seven is a serviceable shot blocker. But with him off the floor, you, it's, you get a sense of being able to see the rim. Beverly. Bounce pass. Lenard Freeman blocked and fouled. Well, here's the look, and uh, Joel Berry's been doing everything. Assists are up, scoring's up, and uh, what you have to do, you avoid the offensive foul right there. Roy Williams, season number 15 in Chapel Hill. He is 32 and 4 all time, both at KU and Carolina against the Wolfpack. But to your point, Wes, I think that the the freshmen, the younger players for both of these schools from the state of North Carolina understand this rivalry. If you're from outside, it's, it may you know you may have a tough sense getting that. Yeah, Joel Berry's from Apopka, Florida. His version of State Carolina is a lot different than Luke May from Huntersville, North Carolina, or Sam Hunt from Greensboro, North Carolina. And, and Roy Williams certainly has a different appreciation <laughs> yeah. than Kevin Keats. You know, yep. that, was, that was his first introduction in the game over in Chapel Hill. And Rod will, by the way, is sporting the, work, the red sport coat for this game. Got a standing ovation yep. when he came out on the floor. Carolina's got two turnovers, which matches their 40-minute total from Thursday night. And the victory against the Blue Devils. Here's Hunt. Have gun will travel for Sam Hunt, Mike. Yeah, it, it's either or. He's not going to be in the paint. Markel, the scoop and score. Oh, what a little move by the sophomore from Cleveland. Yeah, get around the corner, going to his left and finishing right. Here's May. Manley the catch and dunk. There's Erling Manley's got five. Well, they're switching a lot, and this is the second time that Beverly's got caught inside on a post player and a great interior passing. Barry pressuring Markel Johnson. Manley trying to help for a moment. Markel on the drive again. Well, longer than a moment, and they're not even worried about Abu as a scorer right now. They're just going to stick with the guy coming off the screen. A boo for Beverly's three. Rattles in. That almost seemed like nobody wanted that loose ball, and NC State just quicker to it. Packed to it in two. May against the boo. Tried to flip it to Kenny Williams. Turned over. 
Beverly waiting on help. Flips to a boo. Tie game. Right, well, that's you know he's had an issue, Wes, of finishing around the basket, but Beverly played that beautifully and just waiting for him so he could just catch and lay it up instead of having to put it on the floor. Barry fires and hits. Seven for Joel Berry. And the uh, first three of the game for uh, North Carolina after four misses. Substitutions waiting at the table as Berry picked off the pass but threw it away to Freeman and he couldn't buy the layup. Here's Cameron Johnson finding a seam and scoring. Well, I tell you, when we talked about the, you know, they have emotional and physical energy. North Carolina seems really fresh in the first eight minutes. Markel Johnson all the way through, threw it away to Cameron Johnson. Got up in the air with nobody to pass to. He'll go through and score again. Four in a row for Cameron Johnson. And after State tied it at 16, Carolina's on a 7-0 run. And it's uh, now for uh, for North Carolina, both, both teams uh, scoring on points off turnovers. And a foul on Barry will get us to the break. State tied it at 16 on the Abu bucket. Joel Barry knocked down the first triple of the day for the Heels. And now Cam Johnson, twice in transition, pushes it to seven. Don't forget the ACC three-point challenge presented by Mellow Mushroom, available for download in your app store. You can play as your favorite ACC team. So, we got the Wolfpack cheerleaders, Mike. Again, much better than uh, either of us. Well, I'll, I'll just speak for myself. Much better than I would do yeah. or have done in the past. My trek record, not very good. It looks but like, but I love the pizza. Look, looks like the group uh, ready for the postseason. Mellow Mushrooms giving ACC fans $5 off when you place an order online. Enter the code ACC5 at checkout for $5 off your order. Visit mellowmushroom.com slash order. Carolina on a 7-0 run. State changes that on Al Freeman's first basket. Brandon Robinson on him, but uh, you can see that you know, North Carolina doing everything they can to drive him off of the three-point line. They'd rather see him shooting layups. Turnover by the Tar Heels. Roy Williams not happy. Brandon Robinson, as Mike told you, on the floor. So is Garrison Brooks, Andrew Playtack, and Seventh Woods, the sophomore from Columbia, South Carolina, who returned to the Tar Heel lineup on Thursday night for the first time in about 18 games. Playtech on the drive scores in transition. Carolina's getting a lot on the runout stuff, Mike. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty aggressive too, and uh, there were a lot of white jerseys back that time. Tar Heels on the seven consecutive field goals in a row. Here is Pinson. Here is Robinson to try and make it eight and does. Brandon Robinson's eighth three of the year. The lead balloons to 10, and a Wolfpack timeout for Kevin Keats. Mike, we talk about runouts, and Playtech was the last Tar Heel in transition. Yeah, going almost like a semi blockout there that time by uh, Garrison Brooks, and then Henson uh, has been active defensively, and this uh, this just a, a well run break. He's uh, passing back and forth, good open, but a very confident shot. He does shoot, he hasn't taken a lot. But 44%, so the number good. Yeah, eight of 17 now. Brandon Robinson from behind the arc. He played six scoreless minutes on Thursday night. So the Tar Heels on a 12 to 2 run after State tied it at 16. Uh, that's uh, you know it's it, it is early, but uh, already North Carolina the best rebounding team in the league. And second chance points are starting to pull the pile up. Four offensive rebounds, seven second chance points. Well, and the other one is yeah, points in the paint. 14 now of Carolina's 28, yep. and that's after Virginia Tech had 56 of them on uh, Wednesday night. Kevin Keys told us he was worried about his front line guys getting in foul trouble for that very reason. Almost to the midway point of the first half. Beverly a catch and shoot. Wow. Nine for Beverly on three triples. Well, with the ball in Markel Johnson's hands, it's taking some pressure off of Beverly, freed him up to be a shooter. 
Pinson out front. Here's Woods. Tried to go to Pinson. He got knocked away. Robinson with five to shoot. Could not hang on to it. And it'll go to the Wolfpack. Seventh turnover for Carolina. Yeah, it's just, and it's, a, it's, it's kind of a different lineup out there for North Carolina right now. And uh, you can see that that offensive series did not go well. Very stagnant. Pinson is the guy who will be handling the ball in that situation. Beverly out. Sam Hunt has come back on the floor. So technically, they got five three point shooters out there, does NC State. Your seven is 14 of 28 from behind the arc. Well, nothing easy so far for NC State West. Nothing on, on, you know, in transition and another turnover. And that's eight on State in the turnover category. See the points off of them. Carolina's got 10 points off the eight so far. Chance to add to it here. Pinson against Thorne. 15 to shoot for Playtech. Brooks tries to help Pinson with the screen. Playtech a deep three. Robinson tried to follow it. Brooks kept it alive. Pinson. Had it knocked away, and Hunt has it. A foul on Garrison Brooks. And they missed Brooks on that uh, at the end of that possession screen. He was wide open underneath. But uh, good hustle. And this is uh, this is what this game is all about, and how much it means. A lot of bodies on the floor. So Garrison Brooks, his first. Quick, uh, quick little blow for Joel Berry now to get him back on the floor and get things calmed down. Well, May and Johnson have starters. Kenny Williams all back out there too, right? Yep. Freeman on the drive. Four for Freeman. NC State to within five. Going to work on Dorn. You're at seven the rebound. Beverly returned for the pack. He's had the hot hand. He's got nine to lead NC State. Dorn the catch and score. Nice pass by Beverly, Mike. Yeah, and that was a beautiful flash, too, Wes. I think the middle of the lane was wide open that time. You know, both of we talk about Beverly as a scorer, but he can make a play as well. Both of those guys in the backcourt. Reversed it out, got it blocked out of there. Last touch, Carolina. Kevin Keats fired up. NC State's got some strong play by Torrin Dorn at both ends of the floor. Three-point game in Raleigh when we come back. the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. You know, Wes, we talked about the turnaround that North Carolina had to make, uh, but this is not dissimilar from an NCAA tournament experience. Yep. Although, you, you know, you obviously don't have the emotion of the two rivalry games, but, uh, you know, the pressure to win is still very much the same. Absolutely. Carolina's not done this three regular season ACC games in five days since 1980. Now, there wasn't 91 because the outbreak of the Gulf War. There was a three-game stretch there. There's a three by Freeman on cue. Seven for Al Freeman on his 43rd triple of the year. That's one of the first good looks he's got. He, had, he wasn't crowded that time. Had some separation to shoot the three. I was actually part of that run in 1980. 10-0 run for the... Wolfpack has tied the game. That's, that was a good answer. Good timeout by Kevin Keats and a good answer by NC State. Cameron Johnson with six on the shot clock. Tried to go to May. Deflected out of bounds by your seven. But four to shoot for the Tar Heels. Barry tried to lob. Pinson caught it and couldn't finish. 
Good anticipation by your seven on that lob, getting a hand on it. Hunt for the lead. Barry drives it into traffic. Back for Johnson's triple. Back rim miss. Out of there comes Freeman. Johnson to beat. And slapped out by Kenny Williams. It'll stay with NC State. No, last touch by the Wolfpack, says James Brady. Well, the referees are letting these two play this afternoon. And uh, I don't know, Al Freeman, there were a lot of blue jerseys back on that play. It was one on four. But uh, he felt confident he was going to get the call and uh, may have had a pretty good argument. Benson's out. Brooks has come back. Beverly defends Barry. Carolina scoreless in the last four minutes. In traffic, Brooks blocked from behind by your seven. O'Meara has played very well, Mike, to only have one field goal and two free throws in this first 20 minutes. Yep, and, uh, you know, but you say his numbers here uh, at PNC so much better. Feels comfortable here. And I think that early substitution by Kevin Keats getting him out really helped him. Williams strong with the jump shot. Beverly. Boy, this partisan Wolfpack crowd just edging its way back into the game. Your seven shoots for the lead. Barry. Bounce pass. Brooks. May crashed it. Brooks couldn't get a second chance at it. Yeah, you, you can see they're trying to attack your seven to get that second personal foul. Darn! Little hanging bank shot. Puts NC State in front. Right, look at uh, Ian Freeman, some combination. Barry May the rebound. Stripped of it by Dorn. Shot fake and a drive. That's the guy that's brought NC State back West, both ends of the floor defensively, being a very aggressive to the basket. one in from close and he's had to guard Luke May down low as well a terrific job defensively there Freeman up in traffic Garrison Brooks the rebound Barry driving through and it rolled off the front rim been any good and it, you know and it's also puts a lot of pressure now he, Luke may has defended on the perimeter but I think that's a tough matchup for him defensively 17 nothing run by Kevin Keats's team Brooks off the bounce from Johnson lost it well he was slow to roll on that the lane was there but he waited a count too long Here's your seven against Brooks. Skyhook, Jim. Yep, in. Yep. Right into the post, taking advantage of his height, of his size inside, the left hand, too. A 19 nothing run by the Wolfpack. Barry trying to cut into it. Cannot. May the rebound. And there snaps the streak. And it's, uh, you know, I think this Roy Williams standing over there very calmly. He's like, fellas, you got yourself in this situation. You know, you're going to get your, <laughs> you got to get yourself out of it. Beverly, pump faking a three. And now Williams. Williams, Williams knows two next dead ball timeout, right? Yep. Yeah, no, so you play to that. He's not going to burn a timeout right now. And, uh, but uh, Kenny Williams, he's yet to score in this game. Only three field goal attempts. Eight on the shot clock. All the way. Bounce to May. Brooks the rebound. 
got the roll. That's something that uh, uh, North Carolina has really established themselves on the offensive glass. And at halftime, that's going to, you know, Kevin Keith was worried about that. Uh, that's going to have to be addressed. Johnson. Torn, Dorn, another one. Oh, air ball, missed everything. Bounce back to it. Lost on the deck. And here are the Tar Heels on the run. Joel Berry trying to get all the way to the rim. And one. Nine for Berry. Timeout on the floor in Raleigh State leads by three. Well, North Carolina State uh, called the timeout. Things not looking well at that point, but the uh, worked out 19 to 0 run coming out of that West. And they've been doing it. Al Freeman knocking down the long three. And uh, really torn Dorman is the one who played the biggest part of that thing, both defensively and offensively. Nice pump fake here. Attacking the rim inside, no rim protectors for North Carolina. And then uh, the good kick out as well. Uh, he's been terrific inside, outside, and defensively. Well, some of the details of this ball game are fascinating. After Beverly drew his second on the Joel Berry basket going to the timeout, here's the ACC's best free throw shooter with nine. And make it 10 as Berry knocks down the free throw. Mike. You mentioned the quick turnaround in the ball game. Carolina's got 12 points from their bench. That's a number you might want to focus on a little more than normal today because of that turn, right? Yeah, especially in the first half. I would imagine things would tighten, the rotation would tighten up in the second half, Wes. But that definitely you know, pays dividends to get guys like Barry off the floor and, and get him some early minutes. Here's a move fighting. And the rebound, Brandon Robinson, part of that bench scoring for Roy Williams in Carolina. Two-point lead, Pinson. Flings it out for Robinson. Barry, now a little double-team effort of Freeman and Johnson. Leaves Robinson open for the lead. And Manley will be a whistle for over the back. That's his second. And five now on Carolina. And a quick chance to show you this week's Coyote Tractor Player of the Week. A lot of famous players in the ACC from Shelby. One played in Raleigh, David Thompson, but Shelby's Gabe DeVoe has been on fire for Brad Brownell since Dante Grantham's injury. It's amazing what they've been able to do since that. I mean, uh, Grantham was their most important player, and uh, they really haven't missed the beat. Just, uh, they've been shooting the three incredibly well. A blue rim down a triple. Know about that shot he was 0 of 5 on the year coming in lob manley went for the catch freeman batted it away and here's state leading by two in the final minute oh freeman hesitates and then manley blocked it that was a pretty good move by Al Freeman, a nice recovery by the freshman Manley. Well, I say that he's, he's been a little selective in, in looking at his threes. He's only, uh, you know, I haven't taken anybody. He's been very aggressive in trying to go to the rim. States missed their last five shots, and you see the scoring drop. Better than three minutes now for the Wolfpack. Eight to shoot for Markel Johnson. Crossed up play tech. Lamar Freeman blocked and fouled Manley, and that'll be his third by my count. Markel Johnson, as they say, Mike can make it talk. Uh, I tell you what, he's uh, you know we we talked to Kevin Keats about you know and he he had that suspension that he served and uh, came back with a, a a new purpose you know accepted back by his teammates and uh, it's just been unbelievable six assists already in this game headed toward yet another double figure assist game we feel missed by freeman our coverage of acc basketball is being broadcast on afn the american forces network we welcome the nearly one million men and women of the u.s army air force navy coast guard and marines stationed around the globe 175 countries in the high seas so proud to have you with us Thanks for protecting our freedom and hope you're enjoying the ball game from Raleigh. And uh, Wes, the one thing though, Markel Johnson has to clean up second half. He's got five turnovers to go with those six assists. Bernard Freeman at 72%. This is both of them. 
But Carolina might have a chance here to lead or tie going to the locker room. Pinson for Cam Johnson. Backside rebound, Markel Johnson. Two, one at the horn. No. But State is going to take a 37-35 lead to the locker room. Coming up on the Hardy's Halftime Report, highlights, stats from the first half, and a preview of Raycom Sports' upcoming series, Heroes of the Dawn. All that and more on the Hardy's Halftime Report from Raleigh, where the Wolfpack leads the Tar Heels by two. ACC Basketball is being brought to you by GEICO, saving people money for over 75 years. By Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By your local Chevy dealers. And by Lending Tree. When banks compete, you win. Hardee's presents the Hardee's Halftime Report. The legendary Frisco Breakfast Sandwich. Available only at Hardy's. We welcome you back to Raleigh at PNC Arena. NC State 37, North Carolina 35. Great to be on the ride with Mike Jaminski today here in Raleigh. And it was a first 20 minutes of runs, really, by both schools. Yeah, I know. Uh, runs, timeouts, counter runs, 19 0 <laughs> run for uh, NC State to get the lead back. And then North Carolina finishes with a 7 0 run as yeah. well to cut it down to two points. And you see the look right here. And uh, and it's been uh, that's that's been a huge issue for uh, NC State keeping North Carolina off the offensive glass dominating that, that category in second chance points and then uh, Barry the you know you figure he'd come come in and uh, really calm things down but I also think that uh, North Carolina's bench came up big outscoring NC State's 20 or 12 to 4 10 guys played for North Carolina in that first half well, Carolina was 3 of 19 in the last 10 and a half minutes from the floor Braxton Beverly leads the Wolfpack, though. Markel Johnson slipped it to him a couple times. NC State by two. Raycom Sports and Blizzard Entertainment are debuting a new five-part series. It's called Heroes of the Dorm, and students from the Atlantic Coast region are competing in Blizzard's Heroes of the Storm for over 500,000 in scholarships and prizes. The tournament features teams from colleges across the United States and Canada battling in Heroes of the Storm, featuring characters and lore from almost 30 years of Blizzard Entertainment. We also go behind the scenes with some of these gamers to see what they're doing when they're not playing video games. Check it out at heroesofthedorm.com slash Atlantic to find out where to watch and get all the information. Don't forget Heroes of the Dorm. Online heroesofthedorm.com slash Atlantic to find out where to watch this new and exciting series from Raycom Sports and Blizzard Entertainment. Joel Berry leads Carolina with 10 at the half. They trail NC State by two. Thirty-seven, thirty-five at the half. NC State by a basket. Mike Carolina just two of eleven from three. State's hit five of them. Twenty combined turnovers. Yeah. What catches your eye? Yeah, numbers a little bit of a push. I think that uh, uh, North Carolina's done a nice job of keeping uh, NC State calm from the three-point line. Only five of ten. All right, we'll see what happens. Early stages of the second half could be critical in the 234th meeting all time. Thanks for watching the Hardy's halftime report. ACC basketball is being brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Hardee's. By Progressive Insurance. And by Mellow Mushroom, out of this world pizza. Oh, great memories, 1974. DT, Monty Tal, Tommy Burleson. Who was here uh, and yeah. got honored before the game. Great to see him again. and. Uh, Arguably the greatest team ever to play in this conference. There it is. 44 and 24. You don't think they're locked in today, do you? <laughs> <laughs> David Thompson and Tommy Burleson. Wes, you know, you, you look at North Carolina in that first half, and Theo Pinson hasn't scored, missed that one dunk. You can live with that, but Kenny Williams has not scored. They've right. got to find a way to get him going. And Roy Williams was. Quick to point out, that was one of the inequities that cost him the overtime loss two weeks ago, Mike. Uh, he was in a stretch of four games where he wasn't shooting well. Broke out of that recently. Pack with the ball, two-point lead, and 
second half now. Overall, you're seven, maybe the guy they can get some three point shots from on that high screen roll. Markel Johnson's 19th three of the year opens the second half. Luke May right back at him. Eight for May. Nobody really, uh, Beverly has two fouls, but nobody really in any foul trouble for either team. Freeman got caught, threw it away to Williams. Right back to Kenny Williams from Penson. And you see there, just there, locked in on Williams. They don't want to get him going. May, you know, it, it, it was a, a nice move by Roy Williams. Luke May sat out about the last three minutes of that first half, so he got a nice rest there. Plus the halftime. Here's Freeman in the corner. Now Doran, who had some moments in the opening frame on the way to nine points. Freeman, high dribble, able to keep a hand on, and Cameron Johnson blocked it. And Johnson's got the quickness and the length to stay with him defensively. Barry for the lead, tap follow. Is that May? Yeah, May with the inside. Six position. in a row for May to start the half. And the Tar Heels to the front at 41-40. It's not you know, neither team's really been able to pull away from the other. Just when it seems like uh, you're in the brink of maybe stretching that out to over double figures. You're at seven. Two minutes gone, second half. Barry to the iron. Eight three run by Carolina to start the second half. This is the pile on top of a 7 0 run to finish this first half. Williams gambled on the steal for Beverly. He missed the layup. Dorn stole it away and laid it in. 11 for Torn Dorn Jr. May right back at the pack with the three. He's got nine of Carolina's first 11. All right, and this was the, this is the way they started the second half against Duke, coming out with that 16 to two run. And uh, May looking refreshed. They're seven having problems with him out on the perimeter. Good seven trying to find an angle, and Barry reached in, draws personal number two, first of the half. On the Tar Heels of Roy Williams. And here's Lenard Freeman for O'Neill Yurt 7. And Kevin Keats stops his sophomore big man and has a coaching point with him, Mike, as he goes to the bench. I think, you know, if you're about the same size, and I think Freeman probably a little bit better at being able to cover him out on the perimeter. And lost by the pack on the baseline chance. By the way, while we got a break here, how about a tip of the cap to Dave Olson, the building manager here at PNC Arena. The Carolina Hurricanes played uh, Vancouver last night, basketball game at two. The Avalanche are here to play the Hurricanes tonight. The Globetrotters are here tomorrow. The hardest working. <laughs> These teams are working hard. Dave Olson and his crew working very hard here at PNC Arena, flipping it from ice hockey to basketball. Back to ice hockey and to basketball tomorrow again. Yeah, I wonder, uh, you know, Kevin Keith wants to try. He doesn't want to call a timeout right now. Try to get to that under 16 minute mark. Nice. There's Johnson. <laughs> Barry thought about it. Here's May. Had it knocked loose, recovered, and scored. Uh, Luke May's got 11 in the second half. We haven't played four minutes yet. Yeah, the crowd wanted to travel that time. The ball clearly knocked out of his hand. Dorn. Williams the rebound. Looking for a seam. Too strong. And Cameron Johnson, the foul against Al Freeman. Gets us to a timeout. First on Johnson, second on Carolina. Luke May has got 11 of Carolina's 15 after the half. Back in Raleigh, Luke May on a tear to start the second half, and he's our Jimmy John's freaky fast player of the game. All right, it's, uh, it really is amazing how uh, quick of a start he got off to West. Already a double-double in this game. 
17 points. He's been in knocking down things inside. Second chance points. Hitting a three right there. But six of his 11 rebounds have been on the offensive glass. So 17 and 11 for May. You see the details on the double double stack. Uh, it was Kevin Keats who had a flinch first and taking your seven out of the game. Put it with Freeman in. Six point game, Markel Johnson. With Braxton Beverly, Al Freeman, Torin Dorn, and Lenard Freeman. For NC State. Eight to shoot. Markel will fall away. And he had to because uh, Luke May came over and helped out. But it's, it's just not the same running a, a screen and roll with Freeman out there as it is with Dirk Seven. So you don't have to respect him offensively. Nine for Markel. And out of bounds with May. And Carolina turns it over for the 11th time. Sorts of interesting little details and matchups around the floor, Mike. Yeah, Barry. Joel Barry, Markel Johnson's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, that one, he was just kind of dribbling around out front, but uh, Torn Dorn's been the best player on the floor for North Carolina State so far in this game. 13 now for Dorn. Five minutes gone, second half. Johnson kept his balance somehow. Barry. And poked away. Last touch by Dorn, whose dad was a football player at Carolina, NFL player, and his brother Miles starts in Larry Fedora's secondary, and Torn plays at NC State. You want to talk about State and Carolina? These guys know. And it's he's in the house, and he's Dave Dorn's favorite player. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> we found out. <laughs> we sure did. <laughs> Luke Mays, three rimmed out. Kenny Williams back to May for the dunk. But, you know the the first shot. Defense for North Carolina State has been good, but just too many second chance opportunities. 19 for Luke May. Beverly in the corner against Kenny Williams. Oh, reroutes on the dribble. Nice pass, Freeman. First field goal for Lenard Freeman. That's well done by Braxton Beverly. Yeah, good shape up inside, too. He got deep position off that pick and roll. But it's a, you get to see a concerted effort by North Carolina to keep NC State from any looks on the three. Cameron Johnson flipped it over his shoulder and it went in off the backboard. Nine for Cameron Johnson. Markel Johnson off of Keith Kimball, who's in play. So. His own rebound and a foul will be called on NC State. We're gonna call uh, Freeman on the foul, pushing in. First on Lenard Freeman, first of the half on the pack. Yeah, here's the play, great finish inside. You're getting to you take your seven out of the game. It opens the lane up. As I just you know, marvel at the improvement. I know I've said it over the course of the year that Luke May has sustained yeah. from this year to last year. Six and a half gone in the second half. And Manley back on the floor. Here's Brandon Robinson also reinserted into the Carolina lineup for the first time in the second half. Warren really locked in on Williams and they missed the switch. And Kenny Williams made him pay, Mike. Yeah, they missed the switch in time. They missed communication. And uh, that's the, you know, if you're NC State, you don't want to get that guy started. But, uh, you know, Roy Williams loved that shot. Seven point lead for the Tar Heels. Brandon Robinson trying to stay with Allard Freeman. Here's Lenard Freeman backing down on Manley. Little hit and shoulder fake got in the easy basket. Well done by the veteran and then in the vi a line violation on Manley. Right, and that was that's all Markel Johnson. He went over, he switched from offense to defense. And uh, you know that the Manley was very casual taking that ball out of bounds. And 
You know, Barry was fronted and he uh, made a mistake. NC State to within five. Markell going to work against Kenny Williams. Maybe Carolina's best perimeter defender. Beverly. He wants the screen from Freeman. Now he'll take off. Inside a boo! Whoa, Malik! Now, well, finally showing some emotion. He struggled this year, had the knee injury early. My goodness. Robinson had it knocked away. A three will tie it. Freeman on the drive. Wow. Nine for Al Freeman. Robinson just uh, up in him, daring him to drive and put it on the floor, and he finishes. Barry. Brandon Robinson, a long two is short, barely got to the rim. May, the follow. You what got a half for May. So you, 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 you're at NC State, you have to come up with that miss. I mean, the, the ball was well short, but uh, Luke May has just been hungrier for the basketball than anybody else. What a half for May. Here's Leonard Freeman off the miss. Luke May, the rebound. Outlet for Brandon Robinson, and could not make the save. Carolina, an unforced error in transition, but Abdul Malik Abu. Oh, the punch with the right hand. And Luke May on the follow. Tar Heels by three in Raleigh. You're watching the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. 11 minutes to go, second half in Raleigh. North Carolina 59, NC State 56. Time for our Lending Tree Fast Analysis and it's second chance points, Mike. Yeah, it's just uh, 14 offensive rebounds of uh, you got, uh, 29 misses by uh, essentially by North Carolina and uh, getting almost half of those back. So like I said, that initial, the initial, initial shot defense good, but it's uh, nobody for NC State can come up with the ball. Tar Heels are plus 15 rebounding, but they've given it back with 16 turnovers on just 10 assists. But, but you look at that number, but points off turnovers are both, uh, kind of a push for both teams. Beverly thought about it. Here's your seven back on the floor after the timeout with 10 to shoot. And draws the foul on May with the bump. Second on May, third on Carolina. And O'Meara, your seven to the line where he has six points all in the first half. And, and look for this, Wes. They, they came with a double team. When he gets the ball, they're going to double team off of Abu, leave him, and then get back. But a uh, good post move inside. It would be a huge bonus for the Wolfpack if they could somehow get May in some foul trouble, put some pressure on him. Yeah, Luke May's got... 15 in the second half, 21 in the ball game. You're at seven, missed the free throw, so he still has just six points this afternoon. Yeah. North Carolina shot 69% in the second half. Quick lead for Johnson. Remember now, Freeman missed a couple of free throws late in the first half. You're at seven, missed two there. And there's turnover number 17 on the Tar Heels. And you know, you talk about those the turnovers, Wes, and a lot of them have just been careless. I, 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 I don't know that it's necessarily the defense that's forced it. Just bad decisions. Almost as if they're trying to play maybe too fast, Mike. Yeah, well, I, I just, you know, I don't know if fatigue is setting in, but it's been, yeah. it's been consistent pretty much both halves. A boo now. The dunk a moment ago, looking for more on the drive. You're at seven. I think we'll get credit for that. Yep, they came in from the uh, other side for the help. But they're not, you know, North Carolina will not double a boo. The pack to within one. May cuts against your seven and scores. 23 for Luke May on his 11th field goal. Yeah, now, your seven's got, he got that early first personal foul. He's got to be more aggressive going after the block that time. I, I think he... 
He just almost gave up on May that time for the layup. Freeman and a foul by Kenny Williams. First on Williams, his fourth on Carolina. There's the there's the look the foul behind. Nobody got a body on your seven. And you, you know you've got to you got to be. That's a shot that he should be able to at least contest. So your seven is out. And Leonard Freeman, the redshirt senior, Washington D.C., back onto the floor. Dorn baseline. Al Freeman out of the corner. May the rebound, the outlet. Here's Cameron Johnson to the basket. Wow. I, I don't see any ill effects of playing 36 hours ago so far. That ball was scored in about four seconds. Five point lead for Carolina. Dorn. Baseline jumper good. Torn Dorn. 15 for Dorn. Walked ourselves into a nice ball game, Mike. Uh, it's like I said, nobody's been able to pull away so far. Pinson, no look, Barry, and it held on the iron before falling in. Really had the whole weak side loaded up. Al Freeman on the bounce and the foul. Will be on Kenny Williams. Yeah, there's the look up ahead, and uh, he's, May is such a good outlet passer, always having his eyes up the floor. And there you can see the lane wide open, all the bigs, everybody drawn out on the right side of the floor, just wide open for a cut. Leo Pinson will be happy to tell you he thinks he's one of the better passers on the team. <laughs> and by the way, comes in averaging four and a half assists, eighth in the league, and he's eighth, by the way, in conference play. As Al Freeman makes the free throw, don't forget the New York Life ACC Tournament returns to New York March 6th through the 10th. The ACC giving you a chance to win a VIP trip for two, including tickets, hotel accommodations, and a travel voucher. Visit the ACC.com slash VIP for your chance to win. The winner will be selected February 15th on Thursday. To your point, Wes, and uh, their wins, he's got a two and a half uh, assist to turnover ratio. However, in their losses, 19 assists, 19 turnovers. So it's when he's loose with the ball, they get into trouble. Benson against Beverly, the spin and score for his second field goal. Great job of recognition, having a smaller player on you right there. He just dives in the post. There's no way that Beverly can handle him. Woods back on the floor for the first time in the second half for Carolina. Just his second game back into the lineup after the injury. Al Freeman a three. Wow. And uh, that was pretty good defense by Cam Johnson, too. 14 for Charlotte's Alaric Freeman. NC State to within two. Yep. Three numbers starting to creep up for the Wolfpack. Seven on the game now. Johnson off the handoff from Pinson. And possession will keep it with the Tar Heels. But we get a break in the action. Well, the pack and the heels delivering today in Raleigh. It's a two-point game with seven and a half to go. Well, our Bojangles fan of the game. And Mike Jaminski, I ask you, how much awesome do you need in one frame? <laughs> Come not, on. Not much more than that. No. My man went full Lego on you. <laughs> Had Legos when I was a kid. Yeah. They're back. By the way, everything goes around, comes around. How about the second half shooting today? My goodness, look at this number. You know, 71 and uh, <laughs> you don't need to offensive rebound when you're shooting like that. 27 of 43 between the two teams. Pinson. Five to shoot for the heels. Try to go to May. Johnson with three to shoot. He'll fire for three. Back rim miss. The offensive board for Luke May. Right back on Leonard Freeman. He scores. You know, sometimes if for rebounders, the ball finds them. He's finding the ball. He's rebounding out of his area. He was the only guy on that side of the floor and uh, has carried his team in the second half. 25 for Luke May. 19 in the second half. Braxton Beverly, nice little runner, good. Beverly with 11. 
fifth double figure game of the last seven for the young man from Hazard, Kentucky. May on the drive and one. You know, he's got such a great feel for who's playing him. And uh, the pump fake, his ability to shoot, have to be, you have to honor that. And there's, there, this is one of the he just faster to the ball than everybody else and takes advantage of it. No shot blockers out there for North Carolina State. And, uh, you know, why Leonard Freeman went for that pump fake, I don't know. But it just opened up the lane. May with 27. He had 32 against Boston College, 31 in the first meeting against NC State this year. Well, we remember we talked about those guys having appreciation of, uh, of this whole rivalry and uh, and everything. Uh, Luke May from Huntersville, North Carolina, growing up there, certainly had a feel for it. Yep. Dorn. Under six and a half to play. Freeman thought about the dribble. Now we'll take Robinson on the drive and draws the foul and almost got the darn thing to roll in. Foul on Brandon Robinson will be his first. Six on Carolina here in the second half. A late whistle that time, but Les Jones has had a really good look at it. So Alric Freeman, the grad transfer from Baylor, who hit two free throws earlier in the frame, has seven in the ball game. Or seven and a half, 15 now in the ball game. How about a quick check of today's Honda of the Carolinas? Top 25, Mike, and of course, Virginia. Maybe if they take care of business against Virginia Tech, maybe first and for the first time since 82 in the Ralph Sampson era. But to me, Clemson's the most impressive one in that whole group. You know, yeah. at number 16, uh, you know, we talked about them uh, losing their, their best player. Uh, Dante Grant and Tendry. Yeah. But uh, Brad Brownell has done a terrific job with that group. Kenny Williams passes on the three, almost lost it in traffic, and May had it stripped by Dorn. It will stay with the heels. He might have gotten away with a double dribble that time. You see a double dip tomorrow. Some of you will see Louisville and Pittsburgh. Others, Wake Forest against Syracuse. From the Carrier Dome at 1 o'clock on the ACC Network. Luke May from out at the airport. And that's why, you know, now this is where your seven has got to take advantage of him, his advantage on down the other end, or he'll be out of the ball game. That was, that was almost, you couldn't defend that. 31 for May. The lead is seven. Dorn spinning. Your seven. Nice. Omir into double figures on his fourth field goal. Lead is five for Roy Williams' team. May crosses over and scores. 33 now for May. You know, your seven got himself out of position that time. Only tried to get the steal. And uh, in the maze, no matter who they throw at him, he's just torching. Dorn and the basket. Nice bounce pass. And a steal by Johnson. Right, so that's twice now. North Carolina has been reckless with the inbound pass. And it's been Markel Johnson it's both times that's caused it. Those are the little plays, Wes. Yeah. Attention to detail. Joel Berry all the way to the basket and gets the roll. 16 for Berry. Five-point game, 425 to go. Freeman and a foul on Robinson. Second on Brandon Robinson will be the seventh on Carolina. Here's another look at Luke May from way out of town. Almost half court. Uh, that was an inbounds play as well. And then the look and see so watch he goes from right to defense right away. Just terrific court awareness. Now, if you're the inbounder, if you're pit, you can. You got to survey the situation, Wes. You can't be in a hurry. You just got to step in, look, see who's there, and then make the play. 16 now in the ball game for Freeman. And this is what uh, North Carolina State. Now that they've got the advantage and they're shooting the one and one, to slow the game down a little bit. Now you can attack the rim, try to get some fouls. Here's Penson breaking the pressure. 
Tried to get it to Kenny Williams, did on the deflection, and Williams scores. Second field goal of the game. Just five points for Kenny Williams. Yes, I love the, the attack of pressure to score rather than just be happy with getting it over the half court line. Markel Johnson tried to get there, it was deflected by May. Benson working on Dorn, the spin and score. Six for Theo Benson. Four in a row by Carolina in transition, Mike. Yep, no, and that was all Pinson. And they've got a number of guys, Wes, who can bring the ball out of the backcourt, off the dribble, including Luke May. Johnson, the lob, a boom, missed the dunk, the follow, good. Five-point game, yep. three and a half to go. Tell me this isn't a rivalry game. Oh, this is... <laughs> Johnson may foul on Dorn at the post. No basket. More to come from Raleigh after a word from your local ACC station. Our performance of the game is brought to you by your local Chevy dealers, and it's Luke May. Not even close, was I mean, just an incredible effort, especially I think that rest at the end of the first half really helped him, came out with fresh legs, got this team started quickly, but uh, 33 points on only 22 shots, knocked down two threes, and half of those 16 rebounds are on the offensive glass. He's also too high, or too away from his career high rebounding-wise. He has 18 as a career mark there. He likes playing against the Wolfpack with two 30-point efforts that he's put up. Approaching three minutes to play, Carolina is 22 of 29 from the floor in the second half. And all the starters back out on the floor for North Carolina. Barry on the drive, foul on the deck. And see, that's not a bad play. North Carolina's got now, they've got two fouls to play with before they get into the penalty. So if they get in a bad situation in the lane, make sure you foul before the shot goes up. That was on Johnson, his first. Fourth on the pack. 20 to shoot on the reset of the clock. Here's Barry. Under three to go and a five-point lead for North Carolina, who lost the first meeting by four in overtime at Chapel Hill two weeks ago. Barry splits the difference into traffic, turned it over. Dorn ahead of the pack, cuts through, layup good. We're talking about guys who can bring the ball out of the backcourt, off the dribble, and uh, just put his head down, made a terrific move to get to the basket. 19 for Torin Dorn Jr. Roy Williams wants Joel Berry to go. Eight to shoot, here's Pinson. They've waited way too long. Pinson down the lane in the scoop and score. Wow. Boy, did he bail him out on that play. That possession was going nowhere. I understand running clock, but you've got to give yourself about 12 seconds to get something going. Two minutes to play in Raleigh. Johnson at the foul line. Kept alive by Cameron Johnson. Last touch, Les Jones says by the pack. Well, they can go and review that now that it's under two minutes. Look from my angle, it was going to be North Carolina State's ball. Right. This could be a big overrule right here. <laughs> Another look at home, you decide. Oh, did May's fingertip glance? Well, I, I, I don't think Cameron it was Johnson. him, but Cameron, Cameron Johnson, Johnson it's, yeah. it's either going to be off of Johnson or Abu. I remember the call but on the floor is that it was last touched by right. NC State. That has to be overturned. And, well, you know, if, it, if, it, if they're going to make a call, it might have, you know, the foul has been called, but it does look like in that shot that Abu's hand was the last one to touch the ball. Well, we got two really good angles from... Our director Lonnie Dale and his great camera work from their crew today. And our producer Alex Farmatino yeah, as well. They are going to overturn it. Yep. Big call. It is a big call. It gives them a fresh 30 seconds 
instead of it being North Carolina ball down five. Mike, State's got to commit three more fouls, though, to get Carolina to shoot free throws. Yeah. So they've got they've got to overcome that little bit of an, an efficiency. It, it, it was beneficial about three or four minutes ago. <laughs> now it works against you. Yep. Two possession game, 154 to go, and here's a boo off the inbound. Not playing with much of a sense of urgency on this possession. Markel Johnson with Pinson there. Beverly down to a boo. And one. Whoa. Abdul Malik, a boo. And then some. Wes, I was just about to say, I thought that Kevin Keats might go offense for defense and bring your seven in, but Abu has had two posters in this game. Third on May, eighth on Carolina. <laughs> Abu, a chance at his ninth point. Well, to your point about the not getting in the penalty, uh, imagine full court pressure here, and if they don't get something quick, foul quickly. The pack to it in two. Ninety seconds to go. Williams got it. A three ball from Kenny Williams. So quiet for most of the game, but uh, great shooters, great players come up big. And now a timeout asked for by Kevin Keats. A boo, a three-point play the regular way, and then Kenny Williams stakes the heels back to a five-point advantage. Our look around the ACC brought to you by Flo Day Sense of Mist and the only other ball game underway. Jerome Robinson and Kyle Bowman have got 45 of BC 64, but they trail Miami by six at yeah. Chestnut Hill. Miami trying to stay close enough to maybe get into that top four in the double bye up in the ACC tournament. Yep. Florida State, Notre Dame, and the Hokies and Wahoos still to come on the card. And then three games tomorrow. Louisville at Pittsburgh, Wake at Syracuse. Those are your ACC network offerings at 1 o'clock. And then Duke is in Atlanta to meet Georgia Tech tomorrow night to finish the weekend slate in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Let's see if they get something quick hitting here, uh, getting giving shooter down on the perimeter, or maybe a pick and roll for Johnson into the lane. Five-point game after the Williams triple before the timeout by Kevin Keats. He's got two left. Abu had it, lost it. Williams slid in, trying to contest the loose ball. And draws the foul. Third on Kenny Williams, ninth on Carolina. One and one for Abdul Malik Abu, who hit his only free throw a moment ago after that ferocious dunk. There's the look in the uh, crowd wanting a foul on uh, maybe you can't fault Williams right there. Big free throws here, Mike, with 51.6 left. Especially the first one. Got it. Yeah, that's, uh, that, was, that was big. Now you make the second to let you get into pressure. Abu now with 10 in the ball game. He started the last nine for the pack. Hits in the rebound. And a foul called. Keith Kimball to whistle, and it is on Abu. It'll be his first. That's five on NC State. Still two more fouls before they essentially can uh, send North Carolina to the line. And they want to check maybe here to see if there was contact above the shoulder, I think. So Les Jones and Keith Kimball will go over and have a look-see at the monitor. That was an elbow by his own guy. It looked like Doran. It was Doran that hit him. And they're ready to play. I think they identified very quickly what you did, Mike. No, that was, he was just friendly fire. He was he was running to get back down the other end of the floor and just clipped him. Those two fouls that State needs 
with 49-9 looking pretty big. And remember your point a moment ago about pressure. They don't get stopped in the pressure. You get the quick foul, right? Yeah, and I've, you know, I've, I've mulled this over about the, the NBA rule of the two fouls in the last two minutes put you in the penalty. There's a double team and a quick whistle on Dorn. And that's three on Torin Dorn. This turns into ugly basketball, but uh, time off the clock. Carolina going to stack it here in the backcourt. NC State has to be careful. Abu has got to be the protector there for anybody going long. Right. Barry trying to break free. They'll get it to Cameron Johnson. And he slips it to the They tried try to foul, and they wouldn't. A lot of time running off the clock. And there is Markel Johnson, second. Yes, they lost. That is seven now, Mike. They almost lost about, looked like 10 or 12 seconds that time. They were trying to foul on the backcourt. Cameron Johnson to the line, 89% on the year. He hit one in the first half today. If you're counting possessions, Johnson, it's still a two possession game, regardless if he hits one or two. 12 now for Cameron Johnson. Came in averaging 13-3 in conference play. And he's right toward that number here this afternoon. Amazing. North Carolina has not been to the line at all this game, but they haven't needed to the way they shot the ball. Six-point game. Markel Johnson. Lob for a boo. Off the front rim, Luke May the rebound, under a half minute to play, and a foul on Beverly against Theo Pinson. Abu has had some big plays in this game. That was a huge miss, point blank range. And Theo Pinson, who has all eight of his points in the second half, with seven assists, will go to the line. Now, he can change the possession count with a conversion here. Nine for Pinson. Three possession game. Seven assists for him, too, Wes. Yeah. Uh, you know, the five turns with three rebounds. So that, uh, it's not measured, you know, points for him or bonus, although he did have a monster game. Earlier against him with 16 rebounds in that game. And 22 points. Markel Johnson fouled on the drive. Uh, and the last, the last thing you want to do if you're North Carolina in that situation was foul him. North Carolina saying that uh, May was vertical on the play. And the 10th team foul. A four on May, but more importantly, 10 on Carolina. And the clock stopping. Yep. So Markel Johnson missed the free throw. By the way, his streak of double figure assist. He's had 10 or more in five straight games, averaging 11 and a half. He has but eight today. Hit the back end of the two-shot chance. And to Johnson, ahead for May. Here is Kenny Williams, the up and under, and the foul. Interesting tale of two halves for Theo Pinson and Kenny Williams, Mike. Yeah, and, uh, and um, you know, Williams hit that big three to widen things out. Uh, Luke May got it all started. But that's, you know, for, for Williams, good to see. He had a rough, he didn't really shoot the ball or get many attempts in the first half. But to shed that and put it behind him and come in, come in and play the second half the way he did. And Williams, the fifth Carolina player to double figures, misses the free throw. Dorn will spot up. And a Kevin Keats timeout on the three by Torin Dorn. Seven-point game with 9.9 .9 left. Well, Carolina by seven. Story of the second half for the Tar Heels can be capsuled by a package of Luke May highlights, G-Man. And Wes, they, you know, they, they've tried multiple defenders. Your seven came out, and he basically hasn't been a factor in this game because of Luke May and how difficult a cover and matchup he was for him. You know, they, they came in with Freeman. They came in with a, a boo. It didn't really matter. He was just as effective against all of them because he played in a different way, shooting the three with, with the bigger player and going inside and driving by the guys that he could. 
Carolina 78% in the second half. 25 of 32 from the floor is Roy Williams' team. 33 points in 36 minutes on the floor. 15 of 22. That's about as efficient as it gets. You'd have to go some ways in Carolina's record book to find a half of shooting that's been as impressive as this one has. I think you'd have to go even farther to find a walk-on who, <laughs> who has become the player that Luke May has become. Yeah. Of course, you mentioned the rivalry. His dad was part of the State Carolina football rivalry. His dad, Mark, of course, a former Tar Heel quarterback. And there's a quick backcourt foul with 9.3 left on NC State. Easily the best half shooting this year for Carolina this season. Mike, here's the, here's the kind of the weird part about this for NC State. Carolina is shooting for the ball game 56%, and that's after Virginia Tech shot 64 on Wednesday night. You know, it, uh, defense, it's, you know, a, a lot of it, uh, you know, they hadn't taken a, a ton of threes, only, you know, six of 17, but a lot of their work has been done out in the open floor, getting to the rim. 9.3 left in that eight-point game. Lob for a boo. Quick inbounds to Pinson, and there's a foul on Al Freeman with 4.4 left. So, six-point game and two possessions for Kevin Keats's team to deal with here. Wolfpack, after today, goes to the Carrier Dome on Wednesday night to meet a Syracuse team that's pretty interesting here in the last week or so. Big win for Jim Beheim's team at Louisville the other night, Mike. Yep, and, uh, you know, that... That zone, uh, it takes a little while to come together, but I think as guys play it over the course of the year, get a little bit more familiar with it. Wolfpack going to have to uh, bring their three-point shooting to that game. Carolina will get Notre Dame Monday night at the Smith Center as Pinson missed the back end of the two-shot chance. And here's the final shot of the ball game, and the Tar Heels beat NC State 96 to 89. Seven-point win for Roy Williams Tar Heels on a career day for Luke May. Back to Raleigh right after this. ACC basketball is being brought to you by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. By New York Life, with the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. By Coyote Tractor. And by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. Well, the 234th meeting all time between NC State and North Carolina delivered exactly what you would expect from the old rivalry. Carolina wins 96-89. We saw unbelievable individual performance from Luke May and a special shooting effort by Carolina in the second 20 minutes. Yeah, you, you know, for NC State, they shoot 60% from the uh, second half. You think you're going to be in most games. North Carolina almost 80%, Wes. Didn't get to the free throw line, but incredibly efficient. And, uh, you know, just to, to come into this building with this kind of effort after coming off of Duke less than 48 hours ago, really impressive by this team. Of course, the Wolfpack's on to Syracuse Wednesday night. Notre Dame visits Chapel Hill to meet the Tar Heels on Monday night. So a seven-point win for Carolina. Great to be with Mike Jaminski this afternoon. Our producer, Alex Farmatino, our director, Lonnie Dale, and our outstanding crew. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out the ACC.com. This is Wes Durham reminding you, tomorrow, a doubleheader. Some of you will see Louisville and Pittsburgh, others, Wake and Syracuse. You've been watching coverage of ACC basketball on the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports.